Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Home Assistant, also known as HASIO, in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at some system requirements and what we'll need to get this up and running. We're going to be installing this on a Windows 10 PC, so that should be the operating system you have, with VirtualBox already installed. Now, if you haven't already installed VirtualBox, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through those steps. You're going to need 2 gigs of RAM or more and 32 gigs of disk space available. And you're also going to need the Home Assistant VDI file. I'll show you where to download that. So with that out of the way, let's get to the installation. So we're going to begin at our desktop and uh, we're going to start off by going to the Home Assistant website. And on this web page, you have all the virtual images that you can download. This link will be in the description below, so it's easy for downloading. Uh, we're going to be downloading the VirtualBox image VDI file. It's a little over 500 megs. You're going to want to download that. And we'll just show where the folder is here because it's zipped. And what we want to do is just extract it. So you can extract it by right clicking on it and extract files here. And I'll just put it all out for you. So there is the VDI file that we're going to be using later on when we're creating the virtual machine. And what we can do now is we can just close out of this. We can also close out of our browser. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go open up VirtualBox Manager and we're gonna create a new image. So we'll click on the new button up here and we're gonna to have to give it a name and you can call it a Home Assistant or Hasso or whatever you'd like to call it, uh, just something related to it. We're gonna leave the machine folder as is. We're not gonna be leaving that location. And under type, what we're gonna do is click on the drop down list and we're gonna be selecting Linux because it's based on Linux. And then version, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna be selecting the other 64-bit version here. Once you have that done, you can click on next. And now we want to select the memory size. Now the minimum amount that you're gonna want is gonna be two gigs of RAM. So you wanna make sure you have more than that available on your computer because you're gonna be signing at least two gigs of RAM. You can click on next. Now we're gonna select the VDI image that we had downloaded. So we wanna select use an existing virtual disk file and then click on this folder here. And what we need to do is we need to add it. So there's an add button up here at the top. You can click on it, go into your downloads folder and then select this VDI file. Once you have it selected, you can click on the open button and then you can select, uh, go down the list and select choose. Okay, and then we can find it here in this drop down folder and then click on create and now it's been added. We have to do a few modifications to this virtual machine. So what we're gonna wanna do is click on the settings option. We're gonna select our virtual machine, click on settings and inside here, we're gonna go to system and so base memory right now is two gigs. Like I said, you can increase this if you want, but the minimum requirement is two gigs available. What we're gonna do is go into the processor tab. We only have one CPU assigned. I definitely recommend having at least two. You can max it all the way to four if you'd like, but two processors is definitely the minimum requirement here. At the main tab, the motherboard tab, you wanna make sure you have enable EFI. It says it's required, so we wanna make sure that we have this checked. And one of the last things we need to do is just go into the network section and we're going to go under the first adapter, make sure it's enabled. And then we want to make sure that we select bridge adapter below. It should automatically populate your ethernet adapter. If it doesn't go ahead and select that. And now we've completed the last step so we can click on okay and close out of the window. So to bring us back to our main screen, all the modifications have been done. So we just want to make sure that we select the home assistant and click on start and it's going to start booting up the virtual machine. So this process may take a few minutes as it goes through the installation and extracting files. You'll see a lot of black and white text scroll up on your screen. This is completely normal as it goes through the installation process. So what I'll do is I'll just skip ahead to the next step. So the whole process took about five minutes on my computer. And what it has given us is an IP address that we can actually use now to connect to the home assistant. We can see that there's two options here. It gives us the IP address that we have as well as the local one. And what we wanna do is I prefer going by the IP address because it'll be the most consistent. So we'll just type that in here. And you can see as I pop it in the browser with the colon 8123, it brings us to the web interface. And now it's telling us the status of it right now and it's preparing the home assistant. This whole process does take a few minutes. It says it takes 20 minutes or up to 20 minutes. In my experience, I've seen this take just about a little over five to 10 minutes. So it's not as long as it's stating. It, again, it really depends on the specs that you have in your computer. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump to the end of this when it's completed and get to the configuration screen. Okay, so we're at the home assistant screen where we have to create a user account. And what I'm gonna be doing right now is just typing in my 
name and it automatically populates the same name as a username. And then you get to create a password. So you can go ahead and type that in twice. Make sure you're typing it in the same and we recommend alphanumeric passwords. So once you have completed this step, you can go ahead and click on create account. And this is gonna be the main account that you're using to configure your home assistant. So you'd be ne needing this to uh, log in in the future. Now it's asking to have a location. By default, it's showing Amsterdam. You can get very specific here on where you're located uh, if you choose to do so. You also have the time zone that you're in and the unit system. I'm using metrics and currency is CAD because I'm in Canada. So this is all Canadian stuff. Uh, use the country's information that you have. And then right over here, you have uh, share some anonymized information. And this basically just helps improve it. I like providing all this information because it is useful for them. Uh, click on next. They don't give any personal information away, so it's pretty useful. Next, it'll automatically show some detected items that you have on your computer. Now you can manually add them. These are the ones that are just automatically detected. I have some of my Shamini Me gateways. Also have some TVs and some other stuff here. See, as you click on more, you can be very specific on the integrations that you want to add. So you can click on finish and it's just going to come back and now you're at the main screen. So we've just gone through the whole process of installing Home Assistant in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. And this is really good if you want to test the interface out uh, before you roll it into production in your home or wherever you want to use it. It does typically require a Raspberry Pi, but if you want to leave your virtual machine running, you can just run uh, home assistant right from your virtual machine and just leave that the way it is. Uh, so you can see all the options are here. Uh, you can configure it as you would if you're using a Raspberry Pi uh, and all the extensions and everything work as it is. You can create your own dashboards and everything else. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to go into a little bit more detail on this, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.